QUT acknowledges the First Nations owners of the lands on where we gather today and pay our respects to the elders, laws, customs and creation spirits of this country. For thousands of years, the First Nations owners have gathered to share their knowledge and stories. We pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and acknowledge the important role they play within our communities. We recognise their long and continuing connection to country, the lands, winds and waters throughout Australia. We recognise that these lands have always been places of teaching, researching and learning. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to the PCC for You Educator Community Webinar for September. As you've heard, we're hosting our webinar today from QUT in Mianjin or Brisbane, which is Turrbal and Yagara country. We'd like to give you an opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that you're zooming in from today also. So please take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat and as you do, include your acknowledgement there. While you do that, I'd just like to introduce the pcc for you team who's on the webinar today. Firstly, we have Kylie Ash, who's our National Project Manager for pcc for you We have the lovely Linda Carnew, our Senior Research Associate, joining us from home. And Steph Dickinson and myself, who work in the Learning and Development Coordinator roles across pcc for you and PEPA. Thanks, team. Thanks to those of you who are putting your intros into the chat. It's lovely to have that. So we'd like to find out a little bit more about you now, where you're coming from. So Steph's just going to start our first Zoom poll, which has a bit of background, some background questions for you. There are a few questions, six I think, in this poll. So you might find that you need to scroll down on the, using the sidebar to see them all and answer them. While you're doing that, um, I'd also like to acknowledge the special guests who have joined us for today's webinar for introducing the PACE app. We're fortunate to have representatives from a number of palliative care projects with us today, whose learning resources you can find on the PACE app. We look forward to hearing from them all a little later on and really appreciate the time that they're giving us today. And thank you for those of you who are, have put in their introductions in the chat of the land that they're on today. And I can see we've got representatives um, from Yorta Yorta peoples, um, the Wurundjeri people, I keep practicing so that I get better with saying the names, the Gadigal land in Sydney, um, Gadigal land of the Eora Nation again in Sydney, Wadarawong country, and we've got someone from New Zealand, that's wonderful to have you there, welcome from Aotearoa. So excellent, uh, we will finish the poll there and just have a quick look at where everybody um, is from today. So we've got um, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and obviously outside Australia as well. Um, we've got, in terms of professional group, we've got quite a few uh, nurses and others. And I do apologise, we only have room for 10 um, options in our Zoom poll questions. So please pop into the chat where you're from if you're not, your professional group isn't included there. Um, in terms of the sector that people work in, we've got uh, university vocation led or hospital and health service, so a uh, reasonable mix there. And I think that you all find something um, to take away from the webinar today with the PACE app. And um, a reasonable amount of experience with pcc for You resources, so thank you. And we just added a question today um, for our marketing purposes to find out where you heard about the webinar. So we'll just be using that in, um, in some of our ongoing work and in, um, in promoting things. So thank you for doing that, taking the time. So we are going to get right in now to start our topic presentation and introduce to you the brand new Palliative Care Education Directory app or PACE. We're very excited to be able to launch the PACE app at the Oceanic Palliative Care Conference a couple of weeks ago. And we're really happy to be able to spend a bit of time um, sharing it, the PACE app with you today. So to start with, we're going to have a brief introductory video from our project lead, Distinguished Professor Patsy Yates. Thank you, Steph.
Welcome to PACE, the Palliative Care Education Directory. My name is Patsy Yates and I'm lead for the Palliative Care Curriculum for Undergraduates project. This app has been developed by the Palliative Care Education and Training Collaborative as part of our work on palliative care workforce development. PACE will support the activation of a whole of workforce approach to building the capability and capacity of the health workforce to provide quality palliative care to all Australians. PACE enables educators and clinicians to find resources that support the development of specific palliative care capabilities for a variety of professions and contexts that aligns with particular learning approaches and modes of delivery. PACE provides the right resources for the right people with the right approach to develop the right capabilities. Development of the PACE directory has been achieved through collaboration with our National Palliative Care Project partners. We greatly appreciate the engagement and support of all of our partners in the development process. And a full list of project partners is available on the partners page of our website. PACE is funded by the Australian Government Department of Health and is delivered through QUT. I hope you enjoy using this resource and find it a great support for your learning, teaching and clinical practice. Thank you. Thank you, it's good to have that introduction. So that's the background to the PACE app. I'm now gonna spend uh, a few minutes giving you a brief overview of how to find PACE and how to use it to search for the resources that you need. So to start with, you need to go to the PACE app website, which is pace.org.au. You can do this now if you'd like to open another browser window or you can use your phone or tablet. We put a QR code on this slide if you wanted to use your phone to access the PACE resource um, directly while we're talking. The website, um, <clears throat> I will go back to the QR code for anyone who's just got their phone out and missed it. Um, the website that you'll find when you access pace.org.au um, has a lot of background information about PACE and its development. It has information about the various project partners who collaborated in developing the resource information it provides, and also about the palliative care capabilities that each resource is linked to. I'd encourage you to come back to this website at a later stage and have a good look at all the information. For now, we'll be using the Start Your Search button to find our way into the PACE app. And I'll just flick back to that slide, previous slide for anyone who's still looking to get their QR code link, but pace.org.au will get you there. It's important to mention that PACE is a web-based app, so you won't find it in the App Store or on Google Play, but you can access it directly through this site. Once you do open the app, you're able to add an icon to your desktop or home screen using your browser settings. So you'll be able to access the PACE app directly from your apps folder on your device. We do have some instructions for various browser types on the website if you need some help. The benefits of a web-based app are that the information you access will always be up to date as it is updated live. No need for you to check for or download updates. Also, it won't take up a lot of storage space on your phone. So if you're following along on your device, click on the Start Your Search button there to head into the PACE app. And I will just change over my screen sharing. So you should now be seeing the PACE app on your screen. And I meant to sign out before I started this so that it would look the same as it looks for you. So my apologies there. So this is the screen you should be seeing when you go into the PACE app. <clears throat> this screen asks you what resources you are looking for today. You can choose resources for health professionals, care workers, educators, or specialist palliative care professionals. This step supports the linking of resources to the types of capabilities you want your learners to develop. Kylie will be presenting on the development of the various palliative care capabilities in a little while, so I won't talk any more about that just now. If you're just wanting to browse the app, you can use the skip to search link here down the bottom and go directly into the search page. But for now, we'll select the health professional capabilities, all of, all of the health professional capabilities so that we can see what resources there are. 
Using the forward arrow will just then take you directly into the search. You'll see on the left-hand side, you have your search and filter functions. And on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, you can see the resource lists. I'm just gonna clear these other filters. So you can see quite a number of results there. If you're viewing this on a phone or tablet screen, you'll find that the resource, um, the individual resource information will be underneath the search and filter settings for your app. So you'll just need to scroll down to see that. <clears throat> so we have quite a large number of resources there. So we can use our filter settings to further refine our search. The filters that we have set for PACE uh, include the audience, which is the type of um, health professional or, or workforce group that you are looking for resources for. The type filter, which is about the kind of learning resource or learning approach that you're looking for. And the mode is an indicator of the way that the resource is being delivered or some uh, an aspect of the learning resource. So for example, if we choose under audience medical practitioner, and then we have a look at the type for audio visual, you can see that the search results are adjusting automatically as we select our different filters. So we now have 19 search results there to look at. Um, under mode, if we were to select CPD, you would find that we're just down to two results to look at. So if you wanted to have a, a broader range to look at, you can just untick that, that last filter and have a look through those 19 resources. We also have a function for keyword searching in the app. So if you're interested in a specific topic or group or context, uh, you can enter a keyword there. Um, for example, we'll choose dementia and then it will further uh, filter those resources based on ones that are tagged for um, as covering dementia as a topic. Um, you'll notice that we don't have a spell um, we, we don't correct for um, misspellings in the app, but if you do spell it incorrectly, um, PACE will underline there for you. We did some experimentation with a uh, text predictive program in the development of this, but it gave us some very unusual search results, so we had to um, leave it. Uh, so, as I said, you, if you start typing in a word too, it will or automatically filter results based on those letters that you've already typed in. So if you don't know how to spell a very long word, you can just put a bit of it in and see where you get from there. Um, similarly, you can type in a symptom uh, and you'll get some results there as well. Uh, so the, the search function is something that we will be refining over time and we're able to um, get some information from the app about what kinds of keywords people are using to search for and if we need to uh, adjust our um, keyword and filter tagging based on those search results that people are doing. So once you've got a list of resources you're interested in looking at, or in this case, just one now, um, clicking uh, on the down arrow next to the resource will just open up a bit more information about it. And clicking on the actual resource title will open up the full resource information page. <clears throat> So when you open up the resource information, you'll find the type of resource at the top. This is audio visual. Uh, the resource title here will provide you a direct link to the resource on our project partner website. And the resource, uh, the project name here will give you a link to the project website directly. We also have some information about, just general information about the resource and the learning outcomes, the duration, any certifications if they're in there, and um, the capabilities, keyword and filter tags that have been used in the resource. So if you would like to bookmark a resource to come back to later, you can use the bookmark button here, add to my resources. This is the part of the app that will require you to sign in to be able to use. So you can either create an account, which just requires an email and password, um, or if you're already signed up, then like me, then I will just quickly sign in. Um, I would ask you to sign up now um, just to get more users into the app, but it does take a little moment to get to your email authentication. So we don't want to slow, uh, slow you down to do that now, but you can still use the app um, for searching and finding resources without having to um, sign in. The other thing that's on this page is a little share icon there where you can just click to copy a link 
and then you can then email or text that link as you would like to share it. <clears throat> um, just on the signing up process, if anyone does experience issues with their registration, please let us know. We have had some um, problems with certain firewalls, um, not letting the email authentication work, but that ironically has been just QT emails to date. So hopefully um, everyone outside of QT is all, all fine with that. Um, <clears throat> The other thing to just show is now that I've signed in, uh, you can see the My Resources tab uh, is there. So every resource that I've um, bookmarked previously um, is there in My Resources. So anytime you come back into the app now, you will have your bookmarked resources there. Um, just to point out as well, there are some resources that you'll see are part of a larger program. And I was just opened up here as an example, the EN Toolkit Topic 4. Um, so if you see down here, uh, it says resource five of the PCC for You Enrolled Nurse Toolkit. So if you click on that link, it'll take you to the whole Enrolled Nurse Toolkit with a description of the toolkit uh, and the relevant information to access it there, and then a full list of the resources that are provided. So you can so you can see that there. Okay, so I have a little challenge for you now because I'm sure you're all PACE app experts after that uh, quick 15 minutes. Uh, and we've got some challenges, so uh, we'll see how you go. I'm just going to share back to my PowerPoint slides. So the first challenge for those of you who are playing at home um, is we're going to set the capability filters for health professionals one and two, and an audience filter for nursing, and a type filter for workshop. And I would say that the first one to come back with the correct answer gets a Mars bar, but unfortunately, Zoom hasn't worked out how to do virtual Mars bars just yet. So when you think you've got the answer to that, um, please post it into the chat and we'll be able to let you know. Anna, Hannah's Hannah the Mars bar winner today. Five results. I mean, is that right? That is correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. That <Good>. is correct. <laughs> I should just point out for those of you who, or people who are watching this recording um, in a, a few weeks or months, uh, later that the results it might not be five because we're constantly adding and updating resources so um did anyone um, have any questions after doing that they found any problems no of course you're all masters so uh just to help with clearing your filters now because we're going to do a couple of other challenges um, there's two different ways to clear your filters. You can go back, click on the filters in your app and then just use the X button to um, take those away or you can actually open up the filter windows and untick the boxes there. To go back to change your capability filters, um, you can click on the word capabilities and then that will take you back into the capabilities menu to change it. Um, or you can click on, if you're signed in, you'll get this back to capabilities options. That's something we're just tweaking at the moment to make it uh, a bit more smooth sailing for everybody, whether you're signed in or not. Uh, otherwise, just use the back browser and you'll get back to um, the capability settings. Okay, so if everyone's got their filters uh, sorted, we'll go back to capabilities. And we're now going to have our second challenge, which is under the educator capabilities. I love that Kylie is playing here in the office with me. <laughs> She's not allowed to answer first, though. Um, so educator capabilities one, two, and three. The audience filter for care workers. The types for curriculum and toolkit. And the modes online and self-directed. So giving you a, a real challenge here, you have to select a couple of filter options from two of these um, selections. And uh, the, when you're selecting filters, the search, you'll see the search broaden out. So it'll search for resources that are curriculum and resources that are, are called a toolkit as well. So if you wanted to obviously not uh, reduce your resources, you just leave the whole filter category unticked. 
So has anyone else uh, got an answer for us there on that one? Seven from Angela, starting with ACP. Very good. Yep, seven is correct. John has seven as well. Excellent, good. It's working, yay. <laughs> All right, and then our final challenge is, uh, again, clear those filters back to the capabilities. This one we're just going to search directly without any of the capability um, filters listed there. And we're going to look for allied health professional options or audience, sorry, uh, audio visual resources and CPD certified. 20. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I had one. I must have changed something there. <laughs> 20. 20. <laughs> Fabulous. 20. 20 is correct. Someone else has got one. So we might have done something slightly different. Oh, that's what I, that I thought as well. We have, I forgot to mention that I'll just put the keyword search in there, law. So now oh. it's one. My apologies. Oh. I forgot to read that part of it out. So um, good work to those of you who are reading the screen. <laughs> just uh, testing there. All right, you all get a Mars bar. Um, so that's a bit of an overview of how you can use PACE to search for your learning resources. Um, I'm going to hand over to Kylie now, who's going to tell us about the palliative care capabilities and their development. Thank you, Kylie. Thanks, Sharon. So as Patsy, Patsy mentioned in the introduction, the PACE app is intended to activate the palliative care workforce development activities of our collaborative. And over a number of years, the collaborative has refined these workforce capabilities. And the PACE app really is a, is a platform to highlight the reputable learning and teaching resources that are available to develop these. So it's recognised that all health providers um, require development of fundamental palliative care knowledge and skills. And, and while some healthcare professionals develop increased level and the depth of capability in practice as palliative care specialists, the generalist workforce is equally essential to the provision of safe and high quality palliative care. And this workforce development model on your screen shows that intersection between generalist and specialist workforces who are equally required to meet the needs of people affected by life-limiting illnesses. So to support this activity, the palliative care capabilities have been developed for, I wish you just click along, the healthcare professionals, care workers, specialist palliative care professionals and educators. And as you've seen in the app that you've just used, these um, are the showcased in our app. And these capabilities are intended to complement the existing professional and workforce standards that are specific to each, each of the various health disciplines. And their application will depend on the scope and context of practice for a particular healthcare provider. So the graduate capabilities in palliative care, if you've followed along with PCC for some time, you'll know that these are the foundation of our project activities. And that principal document was developed in, in 2005 through a range of consultations involving academics, clinical experts, and representatives from professional and consumer organisations. At the time, a review of the literature highlighted there was a lack of any systematic or evidence-based approaches to incorporate palliative care in undergraduate curricula. So a range of activities was undertaken as part of the project to address this gap. And these included scoping of existing curricula through survey and in-depth interview, surveys of health professionals' views about what the core principles for inclusion of palliative care in undergraduate curricula were, and focus group discussions with a wide range of stakeholders to really explore and refine the core principles for inclusion of palliative care in undergraduate curricula. The graduate capabilities in palliative care were developed in that early work um, out of all of that consultation and are really intended to reflect the expectations of all health professionals at entry to practice to provide care for people with palliative care needs. And these capabilities speak to communication, responses to life-limiting illness, recognition of illness trajectories, assessment and management of needs, and self-care for the health professionals. 
And health professionals are still, as I mentioned before, expected to work within their scope of practice and refer on to specialist or other services if required to meet the needs of individuals and families. And in the PACEAP, these we're referring to them as the healthcare health professional capabilities. And they apply to registered and enrolled nurses, medical practitioners, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health practitioners, and allied health professionals. Their capability is achieved through the entry to practice education and updated through postgraduate learning, professional experience, and ongoing professional development. And that's where really where the resources in the app are, are going to have their um, use here. So the health professional capabilities were then further adapted for care workers. And these have been endorsed through stakeholder consultation and remain based on the needs of people affected by cancer. And you can see they really do reflect the previous capabilities at the appropriate level. And these care worker capabilities are intended to support all healthcare workers, including personal care assistants, allied health assistants, care workers, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers. Capabilities achieved within entry to practice education at certificate three and four levels and updated through work experience and ongoing professional development. The specialist palliative care workforce requires a higher level of knowledge and more advanced application of palliative care skills. These specialist capabilities are developed through formal qualifications achieved through postgraduate learning in courses ranging from graduate diploma to doctorate studies. And they are continuing, continually updated through ongoing professional development and practice. The specialist palliative care capabilities build upon the graduate capabilities in palliative care and their development was further informed through a review of palliative care service development guidelines, discipline specific, specialist palliative care competencies and standards defined by professional bodies and international palliative care service development frameworks. And we also have undertaken stakeholder reviews and forums. So it's a little bit small on that screen that you um, would be able to see them online as well. So the capability statements further then for academics and educators are intended to support their work with students and clinicians to develop these palliative care capabilities at the generalist and specialist levels. And they are included in the PACEAP reflecting the curriculum, frameworks and facilitator resources which have been developed by our partner projects. So that's a very quick overhaul of um, some of the background of the collaborative's workforce development activities which I hope provides some context for the PACE app. And so now we get to explore some of the resources a little more with our National Palliative Care Project partners who are online. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Kylie, for that. Um, as she said, we are now going to hear um, from some of our National Palliative Care Project partners uh, whose learning resources you find on the app. We have given them quite a challenge today and asked them just to present for one to two minutes on their learning resources. I'm sure they could speak for many hours uh, about the, the wealth of information that they have. Um, so to start us off, I would like to invite Penny Neller from the End of Life Law for Clinicians Project to tell us about their learning resources. Thanks, Penny. Yep, that's great, Penny. Excellent, thank you. So, um, I'll just very quickly, I'm the, um, I'm the coordinator of end of life law for clinicians. So our project uh, basically focuses on end of life decision making um, uh, that occurs across healthcare settings. The training was initially designed for medical practitioners and medical students, but it is now tailored for all medical, all uh, health practitioners, uh, and in particular doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, uh, and also other prof health professionals such as paramedics and uh, Aboriginal and Torres, Torres Strait Islander health workers. Um, the training comprises online training modules and also workshops. Um, the modules, you will have already seen uh, some, all of them on the, uh, the PACE app. There are 10 of them and they're about 30 to 60 minutes each. CPD points um, can be claimed for those also. 
Um, so this is the list of modules. They really focus on the key areas at the end of life. And we're also um, finalising another module, which is on voluntary assisted dying. Um, that will be uploaded to the PACE app once that's available, which uh, we expect will be sometime in late October or early November. I'll just mention also that the modules are accredited by the College of GPs, also the College of Emergency Medicine and the uh, College of Rural and Remote Medicine. And just finally, I wanted to mention, as you'd all know, the law is very different, uh, but also very similar across um, uh, Australian states and territories. So for this reason, we, um, we don't delve into a lot of detail in the modules about the individual states and territories. And you can find that on our other uh, website, which is called End of Life Law for Australia. Um, and I'll uh, also share the link for, for that shortly. Thank you very much for that. No worries uh, at all. Thanks for uh, having me. Thanks very much for coming, Penny. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Hannah Morgan, who's come from the LGBTIQ plus Health Australia project, and she's going to tell us about some of the resources that are under development in that project. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you, and thanks so much for having me. Uh, I don't have a slideshow today. Um, okay. But yes, I wanted to speak about um, our project briefly and the resources that we'll be developing and then showcasing on the platform. So um, LGBTIQ plus Health Australia is Australia's peak body for LGBTIQ plus health organisations. So we're member based and um, we've been undergoing research around the needs of LGBTIQ plus people in palliative care settings. And we've also been asking health professionals what their perceptions of these needs are as well. So um, we are developing e-modules and um, we're doing that in a co-design way. So we are establishing a group of experts and professionals to help us really um, look at the information that we've researched and turn that, that information into really engaging e-modules for healthcare professionals. Our target audience are GPs and practice nurses, but as we've gone through the project, we can see how applicable this will be to all healthcare practitioners who have some interaction with individuals, families or chosen families supporting or accessing palliative care services. So, um, Yes, with sort of a bit of a coming soon, um, but we are starting to develop some smaller resources as well that might crop up a little bit earlier than the e-module so we can look at showcasing those. And we're really excited to be um, on this platform. It looks incredible and um, we're, we can't wait till we can actually put our e-modules up there for everyone to see. Well, that's great, Thanks. thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, moving along now, um, as I said, we will have opportunity to ask some questions at the end. Um, so next we're going to hear from Shri and John, who are from the Advanced Project. I'm not sure which one of you is going first, or you might have, I'm sure you've already worked this out. It's Shri from the Advanced Project. Shri. Thanks, Sharon. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Shravali. I'm the Project Coordinator and the um, Research Fellow working on the um, Advanced Project. Um, the advanced project is all about initiating uh, advanced care planning and um, palliative care and general practices. So our project, um, phase two of the project, developed resources to enable a team-based approach to initiating advanced care planning and palliative care um, in general practice. So like Hannah said, our target audience is also general practitioners, practice nurses and practice managers. Um, so we've got a number of resources available through the PACE app. So I'd like to mention four key types of resources available through PACE, um, PACE app. Firstly, um, our uh, uh, online training modules um, specifically targeting um, GP. So there's separate learning modules for general practitioners, um, and practice nurses and practice managers. Um, and these um, online training um, modules also have a number of videos, which actually helps the, you know, helps participants understand how to use the different resources and tools available through our project. Um, another type of resource, um, oh, just before I move on, uh, 
our um, training modules are also accredited. Um, this, so the GP uh, module um, CPD points be collected through our ACGP and ACRAM and AAPM for the practice managers and APNA can also give CPD points for people completing those um, online courses. We also have a very comprehensive evidence-based toolkit that's available to um, the general practice team um, to help them um, understand how to use our resource. So that's, that's a collection of a number of um, uh, screening and assessment tools. Um, another type of resource that's also available through the project is the face-to-face -face training resources. So we work with a number of PHNs to roll out our training um, in face-to-face -face mode. So we've developed a number of um, resources to help them to adapt those um, our project resources to the local context. So there's face-to-face -face training resources available. Currently, we haven't made them available through Pace app, but if anyone's interested, we can certainly have conversations with them and share all of the relevant resources in relation to the training. Um, so that's like the facilitator's manual, um, workshop participant books, and you know, uh, lots of different resources to help um, roll out face-to-face -face training. Finally, it's the um, train the trainer resources as well, which is available, um, not through the app, but um, there's a link on the app if you contact us via that link or um, through the um, email, um, I'll be happy to have more conversations with anyone interested to um, share those resources. I also want to quickly say one more thing. Um, online training resources and the toolkit um, can be accessed directly through our website. Just after one or two, like a little simple registration process, you can answer a few questions and then you'll immediately have access to the free training and resources. So that's about it. And in phase three, we're looking at adapting the existing resources and developing new resources to focus on dementia specific populations. Um, and yeah, it's really focusing on training for aged care and primary care professionals. That's great, thank you. As I said, we did give people a challenge and just put all their resources into one yeah. to two minutes, but um, thanks very much, Sri. And, thanks, yeah, Sharon and Carly. We'll be able to um, ask some questions of Sri and John, or John, later on. Uh, moving along now, we have, I think, Susan and Angela from the Quality of Care Collaborative Australia, or better known as COCA, um, a paediatric palliative care project. So, um, did you, one of you guys want to talk a little bit about the COCA resources? Yeah, I'm happy to. Thanks. Speed talk. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so COCA is a paediatric palliative care um, education project, if for those who are not aware, and it's been running for about six years now. So um, during that time, we delivered a lot of education, but we started looking forward to see the sustainability of this and, you know, um, that knowledge translation and how can we, what can we leave in case we're not funded? So COVID, a silver lining of COVID was the time to develop quite a few resources, which are on the PACE app. Um, there's a few different types of resources. There's quite a um, bank of really short audio visuals, um, videos that have been created by a whole raft of different people from within paediatric palliative care. Um, my two favourites are meeting palliative care, paediatric palliative care and life with a child who has a life-limiting condition because these are all of the content in, in that is from parents, so those with the lived experience through some other research that we were able to do. Um, so there's a lot of information, lots of different topics around memory making, advanced, paediatric advanced care planning. There's a series of communication videos, um, then we have some paediatric palliative care online modules that um, may not quite be uploaded yet, I don't think, and also essentials of paediatric palliative care for allied health professionals. So these modules are quite comprehensive and um, significant, I guess, in terms of time and size and have CPD points attached, but they are designed more for the generalist health profession. So people that are outside metropolitan areas or that may have not have ever worked with paediatric palliative care children and families. Um, and the other really big resource is the care plan for the dying child. So it's an interprofessional document that um, to support compassionate health care for a child in their last days of life. So that's um, available on uh, 
like different data systems, QEPs, that sort of thing. But it's a it's quite a new document that's been rolled out. Um, Sue, have I missed anything? No, I think you have covered everything, Ange, um, and just that we will be adding to the um, collection as we develop more resources. Mm. There's quite a few sort of in the pipeline of finished yet, so uh, it will be added in due course. Thank you. Thanks very much for giving us that rundown. Um, and it's good to see both of you here today. Thanks for coming along. Uh, we now have um, Helena Rohde from the Advanced Care Planning Australia, and I'm just going to share, share some slides that Helena um, has sent through to us. So. Sorry, I'll just bring the same ones up. So hi, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, having me here today. And it's really great to hear about all the wonderful resources that we're all developing as a national palliative care team and to be surrounded by such wonderful professionals that are really dedicated to improving um, education and resources in this space. So I am Helena Rohde, I'm the National Manager of Education with Advanced Care Planning Australia. And I'm really pleased to discuss the wide range of training resources that we provide um, to assist health professionals, care workers, educators, and consumers with strengthening their knowledge and skills in advanced care planning and supporting their organisations. So um, if I could have the next slide, please, Sharon. So just to acknowledge that we are also a Commonwealth funded project. And next slide, please. Thank you, Sharon. So Advanced Care Planning Australia offers a wide range of resources as well as sector specific resources. Some of these include uh, 11 online learning modules and these cover a range of topics from introduction to advanced care planning, conversations, legal aspects and specialist areas like aged care, dementia, primary care and cultural diversity. And in addition, we also have a module aimed at substitute decision makers to assist them with their role. Uh, these are all accredited uh, with the RACGP for CPD points as well as the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine. We've also developed an education capability framework designed to assist education providers to incorporate advanced care planning into their curriculum. It includes a variety of education resources like lecture topics and interdisciplinary case studies that allow for simulation and role play. And we also offer a wide variety of interactive training and webinars, including an introduction to advanced care planning for health professionals and care workers and train the trainer education, providing participants with, an ac with access to a range of resources to assist them in delivering ACP in their community and organisations. And we also offer education sessions to community groups and consumers and have a wide range of pre-recorded webinars on medical legal aspects of advanced care planning and sector specific uh, discussions about COVID-19 as well. So just lastly, next slide, please, Sharon. Um, so, you can see the links and I'll put some into the chat as well to our ACPA learning site, which can give you access to the free online modules and our Advanced Care Planning Australia website, which um, again has a wide range of resources, including cold information on advanced care planning in 17 different languages and audio resources in those languages videos and also registration for our training. We also offer a support service where health professionals or consumers can call to have their advanced care planning questions answered or where you can refer patients to have individualised support with advanced care planning. So to keep up to date, you can also um, subscribe to our newsletter, but I look forward to discussing these resources with you in the breakout rooms later. So thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Helena. Um, and I've learned something new there, so a new resource I didn't realise was available, so that's always good to know as well. Uh, now, next we have um, Sue Cosgrove from PEPA, and her slide may just be speaking for her at the moment. Uh, Thank you, Sharon. That is wonderful. Um, so, hi, I'm Sue from PEPA, and I'm also representing iPEPA today on behalf of Nicole Hewlett, who's the Indigenous Program Manager for PEPA and iPEPA um, and PCC for you. Um, and well, there you go, you can see it. So, PEPA's learn PEPA and iPEPA's learning pathway is all about combining 
um, placements, workshops and learning guides wherever we can. So um, you can do them individually by all means, um, but we do, yeah, we find they have more impact when we do them together. Um, so typically people might come into contact with us through our learning guides and you can download those off the website um, quite easily. You can attend them in the um, at their electronic format through the learning management system. There's lots of different ways you can find them, also through, also through the PACE app now. Uh, and then uh, you can do those. If you have more that you want to know, you might want to attend a workshop and they can be done online or face-to-face -face, uh, across all the lands. We have um, look, different places are doing them differently. Victoria, of course, and New South Wales have got a lot more online things at the moment um, because of lockdown. We're flexing with COVID wherever possible. And then placements. So then you might do those workshops, might have done a learning guide and go, well, you know, I really need to know more because I want to take this back to my work environment and I want to be a palliative care champion. I want to be the person who is thinking about how palliative care fits in my workspace. And that could be aged care, that can be community care, be acute care. There's so many different places that people work who do our placements. So then, yeah, two to five days of a mentor supported placement. Um, our PEPA mentors are also supported in their learning. We have a PEPA mentoring hub, which uh, is got 180 members so far, and they are experienced palliative um, care nurses who are working with PEPA participants all across the lands as well. So that is exciting as well. And I will finish it off there because I know that we've got breakout rooms. Thank you, Thank Sharon. You. Thank you very much, Sue. And last but not least, we have Kylie talking to us about the PCC for You resources. Thanks, Sharon. So PCC for You, our aim is to support the embedding of palliative care education and training in university RTO um, spaces. And we've also been approached a lot in terms of the residential and aged care facilities as well. And we've got a suite of resources. Um, the core modules and focus topics are available on our website and then toolkits that are specifically for the registered training organisation um, setting. We've got the enrolled nurse and care worker toolkits aligned to units of competency in those program training packages. And on our learning management system also, we've got a simulation e-learning um, module and an, a fantastic interprofessional learning um, case scenario uh, that's been developed as an e-learning articulate rise, so it's very accessible. So a range of resources, beautiful case-based resources. I guess really the PACE app is a little, um, it's, a, it's going to make my job a lot easier because when I do go to universities or RTOs, my first um, comment is that the PCC for you resources aren't the be-all and end-all, and for many years I've been referring on to a number of the other national palliative care projects resources to academics um, and educators in RTOs. So really for me, this is a godsend because I'm able to refer on my um, contacts to the PACE app. And I think it will certainly um, make their lives easier, but also just improve the, the range of education resources that are available for students. So as an outcome, we, you know, I'll meet my deliverables of ensuring that we have a much better prepared um, health workforce. So for me, I, I'm really thrilled to be able to be part of this the development of the PACE app. And I will, at this point, certainly take my hat off to Sharon, who's been instrumental to uh, this development as well, and also to all our national palliative care partners for the collaboration, which has been um, just without question, um, everyone has just jumped on board. So it's been brilliant. So, but anyway, I've taken my time. Thank you, Sharon. That's okay. Thank you. Now, given the uh, the time that there's only about five minutes left, um, I might forego our elaborate breakout room plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to try and, in keeping with the pace theme, do some a kind of speed breakout room session where people could ask individual questions uh, of each of the project partners. But I think I might just open it up um, 
to questions from participants um, of the webinar today or also from one palliative care project partner to another mm -hmm. if you want to ask questions of the other project partners. I understand Sue has to go so if you have a pepper question I would encourage you to ask it now mm -hmm. um, otherwise Steph and I can probably muddle through a pepper answer as well if, you, if Sue has to, to leave. Uh, but I, did I miss any questions that came through in the chat um, for project partners? I noticed we've got a lot of resources and links have been added there. We will also put all those uh, resource links up on our um, learning management system for the, uh, our webinar page for the Educator Community Hub. So for each webinar, we post um, the recording as well as a um, as well as a whole list of resources there. So um, we do have one question there. Um, when can we start using the, the app? It is available now, this app. Um, I did explain, um, it, it, you'll see if you access the recording that um, it's not on the App Store um, as it's a web-based app. So just go directly to pace.org.au. Um, thanks, Kylie. And you can click on the Start Your Search and that will take you through to the app. Um, then you can add a, an icon to your home screen or desktop once you're in the browser. Um, they're just using your browser settings. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but we do have some instructions for how to do that on the PACE website if you need to need some help. But I actually worked it out without any instructions, so it can't be terribly hard. Um, any questions there? Kylie's got a question for someone? No? Um, no, just a comment probably that um, a number of the projects have mentioned that they have resources to come and mm -hmm. we certainly acknowledge that. The great thing about this app and how it's been developed is that it is scalable. So we are going to be able to expand our search parameters if needed and also we've got a process in place with the National Palliative Care Partners to be able to um, submit any uh, adjustments to the app. We can on the very quickly go on the back end and update links if anything's changed. So I don't know if anyone realises Care Search has had a huge overhaul today and um, has been re-released. So we'll be able to update those resource links um, very quickly and be responsive. Um, probably the only thing I wanted to add. Thank you, Sue. Enjoy your next meeting. Any other questions at all? I've just um, noticed a question there about um, having trouble signing up. Please, if you've had trouble with your sign up and your email, send us an email. It's pace at qut.edu.au. Um, we will try and follow up with that afterwards in the chat, but if you could send us an email to let us know um, and the, with the email address that you've been trying to use. so. This particular browser. It might be a browser, it might be like the QT problem. Thanks, Susan. We appreciate you being involved and we look forward to the, the new resources that are coming from Quokka. I really enjoyed all those little videos when I watched them to put them on the app. So um, yeah, they're really good resources. Well, we might farewell you all there and um, just, we've got a final poll um, just to have a look at your experience of the webinar today. So um, Steph's just going to share that um, and get you to fill that in. If you would take a few minutes to do that, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, I'm also just going to put up a little uh, reminder that you can access our webinar recordings or they're all on our YouTube channel, but also if you go into our learning management system, palliativecareeducation.com.au and uh, you can join up to the PCC for You Educator Community Hub and you'll find out about the webinars that are coming up. You can access recordings and you can access the, all the resources that are provided as part of the webinar. Uh, our next webinar will be on the 19th of October, uh, same time, 2 to 3 p.m. I think we'll be dealing with um, daylight savings oh. then. So uh, we'll make sure we're really clear about mm -hmm. how that works. Uh, and our topic is going to be looking at um, allied health uh, specific, discipline specific uh, resources, use, how we use PCC for you um, for specific resources for allied health. So please share with allied health colleagues if, um, if they're interested in that at the moment. Um, oh my goodness, we have 100% of people filled in the poll at the end. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, thank you so much for spending time with us today. See you next time. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.